Thanks for downloading this episode of the Resilient Advisor Podcast. My name is Jay Coulter, and joining me today is Ellen Rogan. Ellen is the founder and president of Strategic Financial Designs. She is also the co-author of the New York Times bestseller, Picture Your Prosperity, Smart Money Moves to Turn Your Vision into Reality. She holds a CPA and CFP designation, and Ellen and her work have been quoted in national publications such as the New York Times, Money, Time.com, Forbes, The Huffington Post, and U.S. News and World Report. You may know her if you're a financial advisor through her regular contributions to Horse's Mouth and as a host of the Horse's Mouth Advisor Radio Program. She also serves on several boards, including the Metropolitan Capital Bank in Chicago and the Ghana Scholarship Fund. Ellen, thanks so much for coming on the podcast. Oh, Jay, I'm so excited to be here with you. You have such an interesting background and so many great ideas about the business. We're going to focus on this concept of generosity as the new currency in business. But first, tell us a little bit about how you've developed some of these concepts and strategies given this interesting approach you have to money. What I learned very early in my career is that although our industry focuses a lot on the technical um, parts of our business, how do you allocate portfolios, tax strategies, insurance strategies, what is the most impactful thing in making a difference in our clients' lives is really so much more about how they view money and their mindset. And I became a student very early in my career all around this about certainly behavioral finance, but also understanding people's money personalities and other ways to approach money that have it be really successful for people. And what I found is that there's really incredible parallels between how people deal with their individual money and then how, as a business owner, as a financial advisor, I deal with my business. It's actually all the same strategies in terms of uh, being successful, feeling good about what you're doing, being happy, and, and getting results. Hmm. So could you give us an example? Yeah, so when I started my career, I was working for some guys that did their business through cold calling, which was just so awful. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> it was so, I hated it, and I had a things that I enjoyed doing and was good at. And um, so I took sales courses, and I got introduced to this woman named Suzanne Stone, who talked to me about networking. And I was so lucky, in retrospect, to get such a beautiful lesson about growing my business at such um, an early stage in my career. And what Suzanne told me was, she said, Ellen, what you sow, you reap. And if you want to get more business from people, you have to be out there giving as many referrals and business as possible. And she was, we were both in this, um, it was like a leads group, and she said, Ellen, my goal every meeting is when we stand up to tell what business we've done, that I give more business to everyone else in that room than anyone else. Because then people will, not only does it serve them, but people will want to get to know me and know that I'm someone of influence. And so right from the start, that has always been a huge part of my business strategy was um, – to figure out how I can give whatever I most want to get without really an expectation of getting anything back in return. So this gets to your money strategy around generosity. And you believe it's actually, it's a financial strategy. Tell us a little bit about that. There's very interesting research around when people are generous with their money. And let's just give a, a visual just to start, and then we can talk about some of the research. But Remember back in 2008 and 2009? Do you remember that? <laughs> like what it was like then? <laughs> Way too well. Yeah, so everyone was just freaked out about their money. And advisors were scared, but certainly our clients were panicked. And I remember at that time, people were holding on so tightly to what they had. And so if you can make a visual of like making plunged fists, of holding on so tightly to being so afraid, and many of these people that had been generous with charities and people in their lives before that turned into being so fear-based. And so if your hands are clenched, you can't possibly receive anything. 
And on the other hand, there's some people that are always like giving, 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 and um, if your palms are always open, that doesn't work either. There's this process of giving and receiving. So it's um, from a, an emotional and um, level important to give, but let's talk from a practical level why that's also important. Um, a couple of different studies on this. So one study showed that as people became more generous, their incomes actually increased. So if you can imagine two families from the same part of the country, same education level, same starting income level, the difference is that in one year that one family gave $100 more to charity than another family. This one study showed that that family who gave more actually earned $300 more at the end of the year. And we know that countries that are more generous, like the United States, have higher GDPs. And so um, there's some um, research that shows that this works. Other research, um, very deep, deep research, shows that as people are more generous, both with their money and with their time, it boosts their health levels, their longevity increases. There's all sorts of really amazing benefits from doing that. So then why do you think it's so rarely talked about in business? Well, especially in our business um, and being financial advisors, first of all, it's a very kind of left brain strategy. It's a very um, way of, I mean, most of us were brought up in this industry thinking about how can I get more business, not the conversation of how can I add more value and serve more people. And with the belief that that will ultimately flow back to serve you, which, you know, I know you know, because the reason you're doing this podcast is to add value to financial advisors. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, good things come back to people that give, but um, I think there just hasn't been the right um, focus on the right energy. You know, I was thinking back when I was working for these guys I started working for early in my career, and I'm still friendly with them, so I don't mean to like be throwing them under the bus at all. But the other way besides making cold calls that they built their business was from doing public seminars. And they used to talk about people in the room is how many buying units were there. Mm -hmm. like, Yep. How like awful is that? Would you want to be like thought of as a buying unit? That's right. And I didn't realize it at the time. That's kind of how we just talked about them. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and to shift to a generous, more generous approach would be, you know, how I've always looked at my speaking. I actually built my um, business besides networking. I did a ton of public speaking and workshops for anyone that would have me when I was first starting out. And one of the things I quickly came to know is this was my way to serve lots of people. Everyone in that room is not going to be my client. They might have an advisor. They might not be qualified. But if I could share information with all of them, I was doing a really good thing. Mm -hmm. Now, imagine if you're sitting in that audience with my energy of like, wow, I really want to provide you something valuable, whether we end up working together or not, or the advisor standing up there going, how many buying units do I have sitting in those chairs? How many butts are in the seats? Mm -hmm. Right? And so I, I think there's lots of language we use in our business that just does, is not very generous. And I think that for, that's one of the many reasons I think sometimes we get a really bad rap or we have a bad um, image kind of in the marketplace sometimes. Well, just think about the way as we got started in the business, we thought of fees and commissions. They're called production. How much can you produce off somebody else's assets? It's just, just ridiculous to me. If our clients knew that's what it was called, they really would not look favorably on that for sure. So, yeah, it's still called that. <laughs> I don't know what. I mean. Definitely at the um, broker-dealers. For so, sure. So, Ellen, let's talk about the concept then of generosity becoming a currency in business, something that you can use that could even make you wealthy. Yeah, Um we can talk about this from a few different ways. Um, first of all, there's a really classic, wonderful book by Dr. Robert Caldini called Influence. And one of the um, keys to influencing other people is this law of reciprocity. And um, the old school way of looking at that in our business was you give to get. Like, mm -hmm. okay, Jay, I'll give you business, but you better be give me business back or I'm not going to give you business anymore. Um, 
but it, that's really old school. The way to look at it more is, look, I'm going to give business to people. I think you're going to do a great job for my clients if I'm giving client referrals or do a great job for me and trusting and knowing that it always flows back from some other source. Um, Caldini did this, um, quoted this research in his book where this, um, these researchers sent out Christmas cards randomly to people in the phone book and because this feeling of like when someone does something for you, you feel like you have to do something back, they were getting um, Christmas cards back from strangers. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, you know, it practically happens. If I'm out there totally supporting people in my network, like introducing them to other people I think could be helpful, having them on my podcast if that's something I can do, referring business to them, they're going to ultimately either want to give something back to me or I've built enough social capital with them that if I do need their help on the road, there's no way they're going to say no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that's certainly a way. Yeah. I I love that book, Influence. I reference it in my training programs on networking and social media. And in there, there's just amazing research. Listeners, I think that Influence is probably the best book for sales, marketing, and influence just because it's research-driven. And that law of reciprocity, I mean, that's that's time tested. Right. And you even just personally think about it. Mm-hmm. You know, if someone, I just got a thank you note from a woman that I know, and it was really unexpected. It was super sweet of her. And I feel like, oh my gosh, I need to write her a thank you note for her thank you note. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. All right. So because I know your business, I know that you were able to grow it significantly during the 08 09 recession. How did this concept of generosity play a part in this? Yeah, well, actually, 08, 09 were flat years, a little bit up for me. It was 2001, 2002, where you, people might not remember that because it wasn't nearly as awful, but the market in 2002 was down 17% that year. And I was um, a few years into working with assets under management versus kind of old commissionable stuff. and. I had this huge shift in perspective then. And I know like now it sounds obvious, but up until that point in time, I had set all my business goals, just like most of the people in our industry do. It was on either um, new assets under management, new net assets under management, number of clients, revenues. That was a number I always like to look at. Uh, And that's where all my attention was. And in that period of time, you know, it was right after 9-11, people were really scared. We went through the 90s with really no, you know, most of my early career, I never really saw the market go down for more than a month. So it was a really, really scary time. And that shift of perspective was for me to really be there to serve my clients, to be like, oh, my God, people need us more than ever. People were terrified And I was picking up the phone when lots of people, advisors, were just like silent with their clients. They didn't pick up the phone. They were scared to talk about what was going on. And, um, you know, right after 9-11, I was calling on my clients saying, you know, is everyone in your family okay? We're in Chicago, so there wasn't like, um, wasn't like we were on the East Coast. But um, that shift of I am here to truly serve these people and make them less worried about their money and answer their questions brought huge numbers of referrals to my office then because other people's advisors were not talking to them and also more assets. Mm -hmm. Um, And so ultimately it meant my income went up 39% in one year uh, because of that. And it really set the stage for me going from kind of an okay, you know, okay producer you know, I was paying my bills, I was paying our bills at home, for, but to a top producer. And I, I, that was about the, ma- the most major shift that I made. It wasn't like I had this very slick marketing strategy that I put into place then. So that's great advice for advisors that have just gotten into the business over the past 10 years. You know, if you think about it, there's a whole generation of financial advisors that have not experienced that type of downturn. 
And, you know, Ellen, you and I have been through it twice, and we know what happens to most financial advisors. They hide under their desk, and they lose their clients. So for the folks who haven't been through it, Ellen's advice could not be any more spot on. When we do have a downturn, make sure you're proactive in your engagement with your clients. It pays huge dividends, as Ellen demonstrated uh, during the 0102 period. And I would add, in, in addition to totally being there and proactive, it's being having the emotional intelligence and the empathy to know what they're going through. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and to really, be, to really be there for them. So are there any other examples of generosity as a driver of a business plan that you could put oh, some yeah. color on and get a little for granular sure. for these folks? Great. Yeah, so... Um, just to go back to Caldini again, this whole likability factor. You know, people want to do business with people they like. And one of the great ways is to evidence your own generosity. Like, I am sure that, you know, many of the people listening do amazing work in their community. Um, it is fine to let people know about that. I mean, you're not doing it to brag. You're doing it because you want to do good work, and there's all sorts of benefits, per, you know, personally and psychically from really helping other people, but it also, people want to do business with good people. So if you're a good um, citizen, a good person in your community, so for example, I have been, I don't know, six or seven times to Ghana. I work with, the, as you mentioned in my intro, with the Ghana Scholarship Fund. So it's not that I mention this to clients to brag, like, oh, I go to Ghana and I have this scholarship fund and I work with women business owners there. No, like I'll explain like, oh, gosh, this is what I've done and people are interested and it's, it's you know, a, a good reflection of kind of my values and what's important to me. Um, another thing that you can do is, um, when, so my business was 25 years old recently. And so in honor of our 25th anniversary, I sent a letter to all my clients saying that in honor anniversary, we would like to make a $100 donation to any charity that is important to you. Wow. So a couple of things happened is one, they like thought that was nice, right? Uh-huh. And I uh-huh. got to feel good and I got to learn what their important charities were. Like some of them I knew, you know, I've seen their tax returns, so they'll talk about it. But, um, you know, it did um, a, a lot of wonderful things and it felt like a better way to celebrate our business than yeah, I don't know, sending them a mug or something. Or, th- <laughs> or throwing a party. I mean, that also has some impact. Yeah. Um, and then a couple other, like, just it's not even charitable, but when if there's ways you can give gifts to people that's something that they might like, people like getting stuff. People like getting free stuff. So, um, yeah, I have a client base that is um, more women than men. I have couples, too, but it's, it's um, a, a larger percentage women, so this gift might not make sense for everyone, but if you're working with couples, it certainly would. We have bought um, in the past soaps that were made by um, women who were getting back in the workforce after getting out of jail. And so I would give them this really pretty soap as a little gift when they'd leave my office. They use it up. I can give them to them more than once. You know, it was a nice thing to do for um, things like International Women's Day for my women clients. I sent them these candles that are made by refugees with a little card saying who the woman who made the candle was. So it's a way to give them a gift and also show that we care about stuff that's happening in the world. Mm -hmm. Um, And then the, you know, last super practical thing is give referrals to other people. Mentor. Mm -hmm. You know, are there people out there either through your organization or you know, industry organizations that you can help out in business. It's a beautiful way to give. Yeah, those are very creative ways to uh, build that likability and also, I mean, add value to your network in the communities around you. And feel good, right? Yeah. Like you're not, you know. Yeah. It, it's not just that you're doing these things to get anything. That actually will probably backfire on you. It's because it's, it's something that you're supporting things that you believe in and care about and, um, and support things that your clients care about as well. So using generosity as a currency has clearly done more for you than just building your business. Let, let's bring this full circle here from a big picture standpoint. Why do you feel it's important 
for financial advisors to look at generosity for themselves and for their clients? There's study after study on generous behavior that shows that it significantly boosts your health and happiness. So people that are out volunteering, actually for older people, they found that their longevity increases. For young people volunteering, they found that kids that um, do generative acts, which means like making something better for someone else, have, are more successful as when they're adults. Lower suicide rates are generally happier. And if you think about it, if you are feeling better and happier in your business, don't you think people are going to want to be around you more? Absolutely. Of course. Like I've met people at meetings who are kind of just always so bummed out. I'm like, oh, my God, why would anyone ever hire them? Like who wants to hang out with someone like that? And I realize that sometimes things happen in life and we're not always happy. I tend to lean on the happiness optimism scale a little bit farther than the average bear. But – um, you know, people want to be around people that make them feel good and make them feel happy. Um, and it puts, it, it adds to your resilience level too. If I'm, okay, so think back about 2008, 2009, or 2001, 2002. It was stressful for everyone. If I knew I was helping people, it helped reduce my stress levels, mm-hmm. right? And I can be so much better for my clients if I'm more present, um, feeling better, and that's one great way to do it, uh, to, to help your all-around ski. And ultimately, I know it will come back to serve your business. Ellen, the great information. I appreciate you coming on and sharing with our audience. How could listeners find out more about you and your work? Uh, probably the best way is to go to ellenrogan.com. That's L L E r-o-g-i-n dot com and if they're interested I have a, a special report if you go to ellenrogan.com forward slash what clients crave that includes a lot of these strategies that may be helpful excellent I'll have links to all of that in the show notes Ellen thanks so much for coming on the show oh thank you Jay and thanks for all you do for advisors <laughs> 